Smart Bytes continues and we move on to next level. This time I have a guest with me, Andreas Furman, who is also a friend of mine. And we had a discussion about uh, how we can help the community more to grow. And if I should just brief what I know about Andreas, that uh, if you are struggling in uh, about company culture and how to retain your employees and uh, create an environment where you do have that kind of sense of belonging and where a community communities gather and they are united then uh, he's the man you want he also has a huge experience. one of the men one of you. The men. <laughs> you are also very good in assessment centers it's good that we already started to discuss and collaborate uh, in this uh, session because we discussed with uh, Andreas that maybe this will be a series with uh, two of us he also pain points the intriguing questions and things which uh, companies should do today. So it's my kind of man because uh, I don't like to put garbage just uh, under the mouth and let it there without uh, addressing the important things right now. So Andreas, so very happy to have this first discussion. We are also training. Thank you very much. Trainees and starting to see how we can do this online. And uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm uh, very good in this uh, reporter kind of setting, but I will try to improve <laughs> with your help. Okay, so we pointed, do you want uh, others uh, to know more about you? Maybe it's something I didn't mention and you would love to others to know? Well, I lived some years in Germany, then I came back to Romania after the revolution. And one of the things that uh, I, um, I was responsible for running a large company. And uh, after several years in this company, they, accept, they actually suggested me to move to another country, but we decided to stay in here. And one of the reasons that really made me, made me very much aware of this country is how much development in human development will be necessary in order to create quality teams. And I started to work in assessment business and in assessment, I discovered how much you can learn about a person in a, a three, four hours interaction and how quality conversation you can generate in order to make the person aware of own resources and be aware of how can increase abilities. I really I started to enjoy this activity. So I moved to trainings, coaching, and I really set my feet in the area of culture because culture is something that everybody is very much aware of when a three people walking around there's a group culture in that area and having more awareness of what that culture means what that culture what values that culture represent can be an asset on which you can build success of that group and uh, the culture in organization is a major major key to consider whenever the changes are necessary. And in these times, when really, as I said, the tough gets going, is how you reposition yourself as a leader in which you really recognize what culture you generated around you as an owner of the business or as a leader of that business and what people are appreciated you for and what qualities can you consider what can what steps you can envisage to propose people to try out in these dire times to make the organization function and on one hand and to try to keep the people in the organization active in the organization this was our people, uh, main point yeah. we started yesterday a discussion and from there here it is this theory that uh, you mentioned that companies should focus right now on this to do whatever they can to retain and don't fire the, their employees because if they are fired and the unemployment rate will go high this will have a ripple effect over the economy and over the business as well that's correct started i said that this story to create the awareness why this um this belonging is so important because the story of our of, of the human nature is that we live thousands and thousands of generations in small groups. And there are two criteria that were very, very strongly solidified and let's say integrated in our genes over this time. One was the 
what trust means and what was the belonging. The trust was the emotions that people displayed, body language wise, even with the words trust or loyalty or, or um, camaraderie or um, involvement were not existing. People transmitted satisfaction, happiness, trust, joy in a form that we learn to understand it in a body language wise easily. And in the evenings when we succeeded to stay with the entire group around the fire, to share the feeling of belonging to that group made our level of willingness to get involved in the various activities very, very high. And this is something that is still very much in our genes. And you feel it immediately if you go to an organization and you ask somebody, how was your first day? How did you feel that you were accepted? Or how did you feel the belonging or that people generated the feeling in the conversation? What kind of signs were there that made you feel that you really belong to the group? These are topics that you should really consider because everybody who started a new job, everybody went to this kind of filters and everybody could tell a story how he or she felt in the very first day when they got a new job. In trust, how they felt the trust, how the people talked to them, how they felt uh, the um, feeling that they belong to that team. Yeah, so you're mentioning and exactly are... common sense, but uh, people mm -hmm. don't uh, take it like such. And uh, that's so amazing to me that companies don't use it here. And uh, they know this uh, general truth about the human being that I do want to feel that I belong to this group, that I matter, that they care about me. And still, they are just using that kind of corporate setting, called type of environment, and they do exactly the opposite, the counterintuitive thing that they should be doing. That's actually easy to explain. People are very afraid to show emotions in the business. We still have not solved the problem to what extent can we display emotions in the business? The culture of emotions is actually a rather new topic in, uh, in uh, organizational discussions, organizational culture, because we did not have in the past very much encouragement to show emotions, to show I care, to show I really listen to you. That was actually responsibilities and uh, the leadership was completely different. So the leadership that actually will be necessary for the future generation, it's a very integrative form of leadership in, when, in which people are going to be involved in activities in a completely different way. I have a very interesting metaphor for that from a, a person that I highly appreciate. Please. Who, who said, imagine that the form of leadership, it was like a military fanfare when they went to an exhibition or they went to when somebody in front of the of the group of soldiers was carrying a big stick and keeping the rhythm and people followed the signs of this leader the next step in uh, leadership that was uh, let's say displayed in organization was the leadership of a large concert uh, director who in the front of a large group was playing and integrating different different musicians in coming stronger or slowing down. And the future actually will be a jazz group in which nobody will be actually a boss, but everybody will listen to everybody and will intervene accordingly to make the success great. And that will be the future. And that, this, that kind of, that form of management which everybody is really involved because the respect is high, the professionality is validated, the trust is, uh, frequently displayed and reinforced, why do we really believe that, will contribute to our success as a small group. Small groups will come back and many small companies will be much more successful in the future than actually the society really imagine. So we'll would go you, back to smaller groups in the future. Yes. Would you suggest to Fragment, if uh, you have a big company right now and you cannot sustain it like it is, you create uh, smaller inner groups which could take over some smaller parts uh, from the, the 
company and uh, make them like 150 people max and uh, create a smaller kind of divisions, departments and very connected to each other? Or how would you see a bigger company now to restructure it uh, in the current environment? The human nature never really prepared for future properly. We mm -hmm. were taken always by surprise and had to react to the situation. Goretex, Mr. Gore, had the, this idea that you just mentioned with the number, which is that's a fa the famous 150 people number, because 150 people, you have a chance to know everybody. And had, knowing everybody and being known by everybody, the loyalty, the, the belonging is very clear. So you, it's much more trust there. And indeed, to break down companies, I would not dare to mention that right now because it's still too early, because it's, it's a massive mental reset that is not going to come easily. And uh, the owners, the shares, we have to really go back in a lot of, uh, on a lot of dimensions to do in the same time various changes, which is not going to be easy. I and there to encourage smaller companies to be innovative and to show success because the people will move towards such companies. People will be, the, the, better, the best people will always look for people where they can learn from. And uh, the movement of quality people will be the major determinator of success in organizations. And in the, in the moment that you see that your structure, your philosophy, your culture is not providing motivators for people to stay, then you have to re reposition yourself. And that's going to be your own, your, 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 your own war with yourself. So you're seeing this like a natural trend, like people will yeah, start think, yeah. to transit from bigger companies to smaller ones because they yeah. feel more uh, accepted there and that they can have a word compared to a bigger group. That's okay. exactly the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it will is, be the good people will go, will look for models, not for jobs. They will look for people they can learn stuff from. That is really the future. You're going to look for mentors. You're going to look for people to learn from. You're going to look for some people who you admire and that then people, people who can create quality climate around them, culture, or you can learn a lot and be really the best. This is very interesting. Tell me a little bit more about this uh, culture of emotion uh, because it's a new trend, like how to create a culture based on emotions and what should companies uh, do about this right now because emotions control us and we entered in a phase of profound anxiety and frustration and so now if you as a company can control these emotions in a way that you can also keep your people and involve them then uh, not only that you survive but you could even thrive compared to companies who just keep the status quo mm -hmm. yeah the question is actually very simple. When people ask me about leadership, I said, okay, just, just describe the ideal leader that you'd like to work for. Mm -hmm. Sit down and write 10, 15 qualities that you imagine that would make you completely out of your mind happy to work with somebody like that. And it's not a, not a big time. You can stay three, five minutes to write down. And all of a sudden I said, oh, let's go back to these qualities. Let's look these qualities in you. Which are your best areas in which you really having on a scale from one to 10, 10. And if you go back on some of the items where you believe that your impact is not so visible, what can you do differently? And then you really figure it out how easy that is to do a little reflection, how you can be a better person for the people around you. Mm. And that's actually that's actually the easiest way to to reposition yourself, reflect, ask yourself, be honest, because people will see in you what you want to display if you really feel happy about that. Mm. I was thinking, you know, this is the perfect test to really discern who is a good leader and who's not, because uh, only a good leader who has a self, a good, healthy self-esteem and empathy level and who cares about others 
would do this, become vulnerable, saying the things they should be said right now, that, hey, people, things are not okay. And I am hurting too, not only you. Let's find a solution together. And yeah. only a true leader can do this. So it would filter and uh, bring into the open the leaders who were there, but uh, without a reason. Yeah, this could be tough for some <laughs> companies. For some people would be tough, people. but we will learn also as parents how to educate kids in a different way because this goes back to the very roots how you were, you were educated back home. What values you learn? What models did you have? I would say the new generation is pretty interested in this. The new generation, I'm really happy to interact with a lot of young people because I see how they are seeking quality conversations, new ideas, new differentiators. And you ask them a number of questions, like just I mentioned before, they really do some homework. And uh, I had some people lately ask, uh, answering these questions and say, what do your colleagues talk to uh, appreciate about you? And uh, they give me the answers to what extent um, they appreciate and what were the differentiators that these people can really verbalize. I was really very pleasantly surprised to see the finesse of the answers. So people really feel it and they can say it if it's a climate in where the trust is high, they will say, I like this in you. This is a model common behavior for me. And this is actually how we should really learn to run teams because the teams is the smallest denominator of a group in an organization. The quality of the team leader makes the team wow or average. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and now we can differentiate them, like yeah. between who is a true leader, who is a boss. Because, for example, a boss could have a physical reaction, you know, like a visceral reaction to just admit that things are not okay and he needs to get vulnerable and they just can't do it and so they will lose a lot in uh, this kind of environment if there is one thing one tip you would suggest to a company which is struggling right now only one thing and it's very important for you to transmit to that company what would it be guys times are tough we sit down and be honest with the situation and I trust you that you're going to give me the most honest answers. We are in deep water right now, and we're not going to swim properly together. Some of them, some of us are going to get lost in the process. So let's talk honest language. This is what I believe would make a difference. With People, numbers, with everything in the open. With, uh, yeah, yeah. And accept, the, uh, accept this reality because how you describe it, and you transmit it, people will take it. Obviously, well, some people will be more afraid than others, but this is something, it's exactly like weather. You sit, everybody sitting out in the rain. Now, if it's tough rain and it's lightning and it's uh, thunder and everything, oh, we're not happy. And if it's ice, it's even uh, we less happy. But this is part of reality. I cannot make you the perfect description of the weather, but you know exactly what I'm talking about when you're in that weather. So you suggest full transparency, 100 yeah. percent, to gain trust. And to the level, I mean, I, I have to admit, I have to mention here too. I would really relate very much to the culture of the organization. In, if the organization was a, an organization that show care for the people, trust will not harm at all this kind of conversation. If the history of uh, the organization is not built on your quality values. It's a risk into being so, so honest and so clear because people have different, different expectations. aspirations and expectations, exactly. And that will, can go wow. against the best will of the one who initiated. So the culture, if you feel that you were honest with your people, you can talk honestly. If you were not very honest with your people, be very attentive who actually will stay around you in the future. Yeah, you have from... to be credible anyway and you don't have to be naive that you're going to be able to turn around people because people 
who were not really part of the group, who didn't feel the belonging, they will not behave like feeling the belonging. And this is very clear. They will see what they can take and run away with. Let's put it this way. Now I challenge you from the other side also. Yeah. What would be the number one thing you would suggest to not do right now, any company? I really would try for hard to find a solution in which everybody is involved in the first phase. And that's so to say, not okay, lay out do, anyone. Then, mm -hmm. Not lay out. And then say a timeline. I said, guys, let's try this. I will carry this burden as an organization maybe for two months. But two months I would like to try out how much we can cover in cost. Because at the end of the day, some people will ask, and, and we're going to make money to here, or it's only sharing and talking nice. Business is business. We have to make business to be able to sell something, to generate uh, income in order to carry your, um, your cost. So I have to, be give, to, to give a very honest deadline to do not promise more than you can deliver. Mm -hmm. Set very, very clear expectations. Encourage initiatives. I want to hear good stories, how you can imagine on contributing. What can we do better? What can we simplify? What are the key things that we can stick on? How we can relate to our clients in a different way to show that we really try hard to figure out what we can do differently. These are still the options that any, any small organization, medium, or medium organization can do fine. Even large organization can do this fine. So I believe that, uh, that uh, um, in division level, if you have a good division and a good division uh, um, director can initiate some steps that could generate some extra benefits that they are not really visible at this very moment. You also suggested to cut the weekly, daily hours and uh, just work four days instead of five, because we also have data to suggest that uh, the entire productivity is during the flow hours, and flow hours are usually only two hours from eight if we create an average. But uh, doesn't even matter if you do have four uh, days per week, but you can have even in, an increase in productivity and efficiency and Mostly so in happiness level, because those employees, okay, maybe they will agree with such a common discussion as you suggested to take a lower level salary and uh, have some cuts, but they know that they have extra time with their families, right? There's a combination, yeah. The very fact that you, you're honest, at least everybody knows that you're not trying to make, this, uh, you're not trying to embellish situation. You accept it how it is. Second is, I say, we're gonna, we have to go save some money. And that will make us, uh, we decided to work only four days a week. Or let's say if we're gonna do a rotation, people in a rotation, we may, maybe we'll work five days a week, but depends. We'll talk to the state to give a helping hand in order to chip in with some more con contribution in order to help people not to feel the bite in, the, the, um, in their um, salaries. At the same time, what uh, that could be done in order to save some money, and that could be also um, a question: how we can slow down some processes? Because for sure, one of the things that we're going to be very much aware of in a few months, in the next few months, is that the dance and the tango of consumer society and the people is over. We will be much more attentive to spend the money for what is really necessary so we'll be we'll try to differentiate less we're going to buy a lot on online and on online we're going to buy probably less emotionally than, than face to face when you run in the store and you get something your hands on something that you're really excited about so that will be for sure some losses in um in the um, the items economy. that people will buy and the will losses on the economy and for sure some areas will suffer in that business yeah mm -hmm. okay let's wrap up our first uh, series i hope uh, our uh, audience find this uh, interesting and from now on if we will receive questions then in the next episode we can 
punctually answer them. I would just love uh, Andreas to finish in a positive note. So uh, please tell me the positive things which could uh, come out from all of this. Let's say for until the end of this year. I believe one of the, the big steps ahead will be the discovery that we have uh, families and we have relationships. <laughs> and what type of relationships we have. Yeah, that's true. Now, it, now it's actually across, it's, kind of, it's an opportunity to really validate the quality of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you're really honest, you're going to learn something about your partner that you disregarded for many years, if it's a longer relationship, or you're going to be able to reposition your partner in a much more valuable person in your life. That would be one thing. Working from home will provide you more time because your efficiency will be bigger. And you're going to have more time to spend time with your family and um, even navigate the less driving to, to, to a job and driving back home and, be, and lose two hours or three hours in traffic every day. That will be a benefit that it's your free time benefit. Also will be... Um, an opportunity for the kids to spend my more time with the kids and really do a little more effort in education, talking, having better conversations with them, helping them to stick to the essential. That will be the first thing for us. Learning to work from home will give the people who run actually teams also opportunity to learn how to talk to the people who are their subordinates, how to motivate them, how to encourage them how to talk about their successes, to be better and better leaders if they really take care of the quality of these conversations. Will be some opportunities also for the state to reposition it itself, how to, what will be the role of the state because the state took much more power in, the, in this couple of months. And if this power is given in a proper way, we're gonna be able to find institutions where actually the the leading people will be actually chosen on meritology, not on all kinds of loyalties. So I believe there are plenty interesting opportunities ahead of us. And being able to start to feel that we're part of a larger group to assume that we are really not alone when we're alone. No, we're not alone when we're alone. It's going to be a big step ahead. How did your life change in the last two weeks? To me, actually, um, I had the chance, I decided to write a new book. So I started to write short stories, business of short stories that I publish on LinkedIn frequently. From your own and experience I've, with the companies? Yeah, various experiences and the things that I imagine that could contribute to the better. Mm -hmm. So to make things simple, honest and practical, people really like that. If you can, uh, you can make this valuable, it's good. I really enjoyed the time to reflect. How can we make a real contribution to various groups? Right now, one of the topics of the last couple of days was, how can we contribute to a younger generation to really not lose the interest of enjoying their life? Because all this... Um, limitation in partying and going and enjoying and trips and travel and concerts and group uh, events where it's so much uh, need for them to interact is going to be a topic that we should really think about how can we contribute with events that um, could help them really enjoy interaction with other people of their age so we have a lot of topics that uh, we can discuss. I discuss with a lot of friends and um, I'm concerned about what and how this, uh, this time can reset up. It's actually, we are we're changing our operating system right now, if you're not aware of, but it is, we're changing the operating system in our brains. Of course. We are exposed in an area that we've never been exposed before. We've never been exposed to them in such a loud group to the, uh, to the awareness of ex uh, existential fears. True. Yeah. And uh, being so much aligned with everybody, 
with these fears, we can show more respect, more attention, more support. Be more aware that we support people with real needs. We contribute in an honest way. Are we perceived as somebody who are interested only in one thing or the other thing? How much really sharing is given? How much is the pro bono stuff is provided? It is sometimes good to say, okay, let's do something for fun. And let's help people figure this out and contribute with a good discussion to, with new ideas. Okay, we have a lot of topics to discuss in the future. Do you have a title? <laughs> Do you have a name for your book? Yet or not? Oh, no, 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 I didn't have. So I have uh, maybe 25 stories now. And I said, when I have 50 or 60 20. stories, I will, I will consider to write a book, to put it in a book form. 60? Wow, but that's a lot. You Short could... story. No, it's not two pages. Not, nothing longer than two pages. Okay. On the internet, people read two pages easily. True, true. You, so be, be simple and to the point. And if you see a very added value in two pages, you're going to remember and you're going to share that story. <laughs> Maybe we launch your book online because you will still be at home with isolation or something. That's, oh, that's, uh, <laughs> that would be my pleasure anyway. And this would be one of the gifts of the virus. Yes, true. Okay, it was a pleasure. See you next time, Andreas. And very you much. Thank also. you very much. Christina. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.